You are looking at International Space Station in May 2023. There are a duo of Crew Dragons, two Progress Cargo Crafts and single Soyuz, all docked to a station. Now you are looking at International Space Station as it was planned in 1999. Way bigger ISS have Space Shuttle Columbia visiting for the first time, Russian orbital segment looks like an Ivan on steroids, and number of docked Soyuz and Progress Crafts is just ridiculous. And here we have International Space Station with every proposed module in the last 10 or 15 years. Some of them never made it, companies went bankrupt, Russia do Russia and other modules are still pending launch. These are three different realities, and this video is a story about lost modules of ISS. Modules cancelled, scrapped, modified, planned or simply abandoned. Every single one of them have a story to tell. Some of them feels like an X-Men from Altered Future. Modules of future past. No pun intended. ISS was always a humongous feat of international cooperation. It went through multiple rough spots during construction and operation, and the lifespan of the space station have already exceeded all expectations. Right now, station is planned to stay operational until the year 2030, and there would be even more stories to tell in the future. So join me on a journey where I use Kerbal Space Program to showcase every single lost module as a part of different ISS configurations. And first, we are starting in the year 1999 with Ivan on steroids. Russian orbital segment was always a big part of ISS structure, operations and maintenance. Right now it is as dependent on US orbital segment just like a US orbital segment is dependent on a Russian part. Nevertheless, originally it was planned as way more independent structure. And without downfall of Russian part, we could not really understand all the shortcuts related to the international side. Originally, Science Power Platform or Nauchna Energetyska Platforma in Russian was planned to deliver up to 50 kW of power to the space station on the Russian side. It is unclear is it average or maximum power, nevertheless it was the power generation that station lost. ISS 4 main solar arrays generates up to 240 kW of power in direct sunlight. And this number goes down to 100 on average and lower when you account for planetary shade and solar panels degrading over time. Russian orbital segment have several smaller arrays that generates its own power. And it is not enough for independent operations. So Russian part is dependent on US power generation, while US part dependent on Russian propulsion capability. Present power generation numbers for Russian arrays are hard to find. Even with fluent Russian, I have found contradicting information all over the place. Some places only list potential power input for batteries, other places do not specify average or maximum power, and in the end, approximate power generation in kilowatts for three main Russian modules are 2 for Zarya, 13.8 for Zvezda, and 1.5 for Nauka. Numbers differ quite a lot, even though panels on all three segments are quite similar in size. Long story short, all three modules right now generate less power output than cancelled science power platform. So what went wrong? Well, funding from Russian space agency got cut around 1998. For quite some time RKK Energia was developing an evolving module on its own. In January 2001 RKK Energia completed the assembly of prototypes one for static and one for dynamic testing. Also some parts for the flight version have been produced. Officially, Power Platinum was scheduled to launch on board of US Space Shuttle in October 2002. And yeah, Russian module was to be launched on a Space Shuttle, since Russian Proton rocket launched NASA-funded Russian-built Zarya module. Yes, barters in ISS program is just next level. Power Platform pressurized module was designed to be around 6 meters tall and 2.2 meters in diameter. The lower end of pressurized module was to be attached to the Zenit docking port of Zvezda service module, and the two-segment truss, which would deploy telescopically, was attached to the upper end of pressurized module. The truss would be deployed manually by spacewalking cosmonauts. Over the years of funding hiatus, module devolved to carry half the amount of solar arrays. And eventually, pressurized section was converted into the current Rasvet module that is nothing to do with power generation. Really interesting part is the ISS mission badges. On several, you can see original plan with Science Power Platform and bigger USOS. Science Power Platform was to cover way more than current power need for three modules in orbit. It was necessary for full Russian orbital segment. Total of four Zarya shaped modules were to be delivered to the space station after initial Zarya. Zvezda and Science and Power Platform. 
First of them is the universal docking module placed at Zvezda Nadir node. Similar in size, weight and shape, main difference from Zarya was 5 docking nodes to serve as basis for station expansion. Very interesting quirk of this module is docking angle. If docked perpendicular as other modules, the future expansion would conflict with several modules, including another Russian module at Zarya Nadir and Tranquility placed at Unity Nadir. Plan was to rotate this module 45 degrees. This alone makes for some interesting station arrangements. One of follow-up research modules was cancelled due to the lack of funds, and Universal Docking module was also cancelled as unnecessary addition. Speaking of research modules, originally two of them was in the works. Modules were to be placed at forward-facing nodes of Universal Docking module, and both modules were very similar to current Nauka module. And this is due to the reality of Nauka being one of pre-built Soviet backups. And all current main Russian modules were already partially built during Soviet Union final years. When Mir space station was only going up, Mir 2 modules were already developed and eventually ended up as current ISS modules. As mentioned before, one planned module was cancelled and second one eventually evolved into present-day Nauka module. Another interesting addition was storage and docking module. Storage module was planned in Nadir position of Zarya. RKK Energia also proposed the Enterprise module in this position. The concept of storage module remained on paper, however, Rasvet module is pretty much evolution of this concept. Rasvet is way smaller and was launched on board of US Space Shuttle, and as mentioned before, Rasvet is pretty much evolution of science and power platform without any power generation capability, and this originally was actually the docking port for US Space Shuttle to Mir Space Station, which was like two Soyuz balls welded together. Uh, so yeah, this is quite a wild evolution of two space balls welded together into basically ISS dumpster. Yeah. <laughs> also, Rasvet have fixed conflicts with node free tranquility at Nadir node of node 1 Unity. However, in current ISS configuration, node free is not even there, but instead it is actually birthed to Unity port side. The alternative for storage and docking module was planned as privately funded enterprise. And this was way back in 1999, a decade before NASA started putting privately funded modules to ISS like Beam or Bishop Airlock. Just like with NASA, this was coming from a place of desperation and lack of government funding. Rosavia Cosmos planned to rent Enterprise module to its partners at NASA, ESA and NASDA. Module was to be offered as a package with Soyuz spacecraft, which would serve as a lifeboat, and this way the long-term crew of the ISS could be increased by three people. Quite ambitious plan, and naming Russian module Enterprise is just next level troll. Enterprise module never made it, and Space Shuttle ride was used by Rosvet module. Here we are at US orbital segment of ISS. First you can notice Columbia docked to the space station. In our timeline Columbia was never outfitted with docking equipment to arrive at ISS. Only Atlantis, Endeavour and Discovery were flying ISS missions. And eventual Columbia disaster have doomed a lot of ISS modules. With space shuttle flight hiatus, Russians were faced with increased load on their infrastructure. More of Soyuz and Progress launches were necessary to sustain the space station. And maybe this played the pivotal role in deflation of Russian orbital segment. We will never know. However, if that was the case, USOS was screwed even more with smaller Russian segment. First on the chopping block was Habitation Module. Habitation Module was the International Space Station Intended Living Quarters. It was designed with a galley, toilet, shower, sleeping station and even medical facilities. The module was cancelled after its pressurized hull was complete. If named and sent into space, the habitation module would be birthed to tranquility. With the cancellation of habitation module, sleeping places are now spread throughout the station. There are two in the Russian segment and four in the US segment. After this cancellation, there were proposals to replace it with NASA-designed inflatable module, and another one was to dock Bigelow Aerospace 330 inflatable module, and even Brits were on the habitation module roster, and more about them later. Next loss for USOS was centrifuge accommodations module. Although the module was planned to contain several parts, the 2.5 meter centrifuge still was considered the most important capability of the module. The centrifuge would have provided controlled acceleration rates, and possibilities for science experiments with controlled artificial gravity are quite potent. Centrifuge was designed to provide any gravity between 0 and 2 g's. You want gravity of the moon? Here you go. You want Mars gravity? Not a hassle. Quite a big loss for ISS and science in general. The module was built by JAXA predecessor NASDA, but owned by NASA, who obtained ownership of the module by trading up the free launch for Japanese module Kibo. 
Yeah, as I said before, barter in ISS program is just next level. The flight model alongside with the engineer model of the centrifuge rotor we were manufactured, and it is now on its display in outdoor exhibit at the Tsukuba... Oh, wait a second, I'm trying Japanese. Ooh, Tsukuba! Um, yeah, Tsukuba Space Center in Japan. The module was uh, to be attached to the Zenith port on the Harmony module of the ISS. It was cancelled around 2005 alongside with the habitation module and the crew return vehicle. Speaking of crew return vehicle, CRV was a proposed lifeboat or escape module for the International Space Station. A number of different vehicles and designs were considered over the two decades, with several flying as development test prototypes, but none of them became operational. In the original space station design, emergencies were intended to be dealt by having just a safe area where the crew can wait for the US space shuttle, but after Challenger disaster, well, they needed to rethink the whole concept. There were three specific scenarios, first one when space shuttle or Soyuz capsule is just not available, another one is escape from major time critical space station emergency, like technical failure, and another one partial or full crew return in the case of medical emergency. And not only NASA was developing the concept, uh, the ESA studied several concepts for CRV, one of them was Apollo type capsule, which was like Apollo capsule on steroids carrying up to 8 astronauts. Another idea was using Russian built craft as a CRV, and this is actually dates back to 1993 with Space Station Freedom. The President Bill Clinton directed NASA to redesign Space Station Freedom and consider including Russian elements, and design was revisited that summer, resulting in the Space Station Alpha, which is later we know as the International Space Station, and one of the Russian elements considered was, well, using Soyuz lifeboats. And in the end NASA was developing X-38, NASA's plans for the development program did not include the operational test of the actual SRV or X-38. Uh, the operational test would be actually involving launch to ISS, remain docked up to three months there, and then continuing an empty return to Earth. Instead, NASA was planning to human ride the spacecraft based on results of just orbital testing, which is kinda not great for their lifeboat, you know? In April 2002, NASA announced that they are canceling SRV and X-38 programs, this was due to the, well, budget shortfall of somewhat around 4 billion dollars. Yeah, quite a lot of money. And they just called it a day, they said that, well, your score complete. Yeah, we are done, here we go, ISS, your score. Yeah. And we all know how it went from there. Soyuz was stuck as main and only lifeboat craft until 2020, when Crew Dragon started its operation, and I do not have a SRV as part of my 1999 plan of ISS assembly. If Everything went as planned on the Russian side, if Space Shuttle fleet was still operational past 2010, if Columbia disaster never happened, there is even less need to have dedicated SRV than in our float timeline. Another module that never made it to an orbit was Node 4. Uh, technically there were like four nodes under construction. One of them was Structural Test Article, which is now called Node 4, but actually it was Node 1. Uh, if online, it would be docked to the forward port of the Harmony module. The structural test article was built to actually test the ISS hardware and was intended to become Node 1. However, during construction, structural design flaws were discovered, so they just renamed it into the Node 4 and never finished it. If operational, Node 4 allowed to move around docking adapter and eventually to serve as a platform for future ISS expansion. So, in the end, only three nodes made to ISS. Nevertheless, if you look at the initially planned USS, Node 4 was like a cherry on top. Also, another rarely mentioned module was intended to be at Nadir Node of Harmony. This is technically not a cancelled module, this is a multipurpose logistic module that was actually flown aboard of US Space Shuttle resupply missions. Two MPLMs made a dozen trips in the US Shuttle cargo bay, and they initially were birthed to the Unity module and later to the Harmony module. When birth supplies were offloaded and finished experiments and waste were reloaded. The MPLM then was rebirthed to the US Space Shuttle and obviously returned to the Earth. Three models were built by Italian Space Agency, Leonardo, Raffaella and Donatella. The Leonardo module was modified in 2010 to turn into the permanent multipurpose module and was permanently attached to ISS during STS-133. Raphael module was the primary payload on the final space shuttle, and it returned with the shuttle and was stored at the Kennedy Space Center. And the Natella module just never launched. So maybe somewhere there, in another timeline, Columbia is flying with Donatello on board. 
Also, look at this badge. The module names are also the names of three of four Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And the NASA MPLM group just approached Mirage Studios to design a logo featuring Raphael in the astronaut spacesuit. As it stands right now, Axiom Space plans to use one of the stored multipurpose modules for Axiom Commercial Space Station, but more about that a bit later. There are still a couple of words to be said about 1999 ISS configuration. Cupola was to be above habitation module, and this doesn't make like a lot of sense since it would just limit the Earth observation. Uh, so Node 3 make more logical choice. Although like you can just swap habitation module and cupola, and then if habitation module is placed behind Kiba, it will minimize the impact risks for your habitable module. Uh, that kind of makes sense. Another unclear part was docking method for potential SRV at Node 3 and, well, actually one of the docking adapters facing at Nadir. But, well, you know, this is only plan, it never actually materialized. In real life, Node 3 actually facing port side, not Nadir side, so it's quite different. Uh, and if you are confused with all the docking methods on ISS, well, here's a short summary of everything that is going on. Generally, there are like two methods of docking. Uh, first one is berthing, when you berth your modules, and second one, when you dock your spacecraft. A uh, common berthing mechanism is responsible for module attachments at USOS. It is slow, very precise, and only operated via Canada Arm or Arm on a Space Shuttle. Uh, for example, Space Shuttle MPLM, Cygnus Spacecraft, and Japanese HTV, they all use this berthing mechanism. Also, pressurized mating adapter or PMA converts the an active common berthing mechanism to APS-195. APAS-95 was used for space shuttle dockings to MIR and ISS. On ISS it also used on Zarya module to interface with PMA-1 on Unity module. And the fun fact about APAS-95 that it was designed for Buran to dock with space station MIR. Eventually it was used on space shuttle to dock with ISS for the most part. And in present day APAS-95 nodes they are converted with International Docking Adapter or EDA into International Docking System Standard for vehicles like Crew Dragon and Boeing Starliner. International docking system standard is not really international since, well, Russians are using different docking hardware and Chinese, while they have something very similar to APS-95, they are never allowed to ISS and, well, vice versa, Americans will be never allowed to Chinese space station. On the Russian side, there is also two types of docking ports. And both of them are acronyms from SSVP, which is Система Стыковки и Внутреннего Перехода in Russian. We have the heavier one to dock station modules, with actually APS-95 color, but very different hardware. And then we have the second one, which is lighter one, that is used on Soyuz and Progress spacecrafts to dock with the space station. Very interesting note is about European ATV. During its short career, it was actually docking with the Russian segment, using Russian docking system. And it was basically like a progress spacecraft that is docking to Zvezda module, but it's, well, it is European ATV. So yeah, it's kind of interesting note about docking on ISS. So these were 10 modules that never made to ISS in initial plan. ISS was planned to be fully built by the year 2003, and realistically it was somewhat complete only by the year 2011. And what came next is even more interesting of a story. So let's proceed to the next ISS configuration. I call this configuration of International Space Station as ISS 2030. ISS is planned to be around until 2030, and this is actually what came after initial construction hiccups and initial station assembly by the year 2011. These are proposals and plans from the last decade. Some of them never made it, some are going online in a matter of several years. First and obvious big addition is commercial expansion of ISS. Axiom Space is doing four module expansion, and by the year 2028, every single module should be up and running at ISS. Axiom section consists from two habitation modules, one manufacturing module and power and life support module. Last module is to provide power and life support when ISS finishes operations and Axiom segment would release into free float. Also, as mentioned previously, Axiom Space is working with NASA to fly Rafaela once again as part of Axiom expansion of ISS. The tower module is similar in structure to our original tower from Russian segment, and here I have video of tower unfolding its radiators and solar panels. Quite a spectacle. Next one is inflatable habitation module by Bigelow Airspace. Smaller beam module made to a station as a proof of concept, and as it stands right now, company just laid off majority of its workforce in 2020, and development of bigger modules is going nowhere. And down below we have big spinny spinny thing. As mentioned before, running centrifuge as part of centrifuge accommodation module was initial plan for ISS. 
Nautilus X centrifuge demonstration would have been the first in space demonstration of sufficient scale centrifuge for artificial G effects. It was designed to become a sleep module for ISS crew. As it was in 2011, the Nautilus X design concept did not advance beyond the initial drawings and proposal. And here is a running theme for proposed ISS modules. Everyone cares so much about crew habitation. So much so, that even British scientists propose to make not one, but two habitation modules. The purpose of the modules is to provide formal British presence in the ISS project. The two modules are named HAMC and HAMD. First one is designed to contain a wardroom with a view screen and central table for group meetings and 5 o'clock tea. Second one would contain improved sleeping and personal work arrangements with folding tables and six separate compartments. The estimated cost of the modules is 600 million pounds, spread over the course of 6 or 7 years, and takes into account the costs of construction, launching, and maintenance. Imagine writing this with British taxpayers when you can always just spend 6 billion pounds on coal burning aircraft carrier. <coughs> modules never even made to a drawing board. Also, wait a second, there is something on the back of this module. I wonder how it actually got there. And now we have arrived once again to the Russian orbital segment. Two extra modules were to be in the operation somewhere after 2024. Not going to happen after Russian space industry went under the sanctions. But you know, Russia do Russia, China do China, and now we have more space things to talk about. Nauka module is operational and it have received small pre-child module to serve as basis for Russian expansion, and there were two research modules of the next generation designed and planned to be the said expansion. Quite different from typical DOS modules that are basis for Core, Mir, Zarya, Zvezda and Nauka, I bet they were finally built in Russia, not in Soviet Union for Mir 2 space station. Both modules were to have solar arrays with sun tracking capability, and another idea was to turn one of the modules into tourist attraction to expand the reoccurring space tourism on ISS. And this were 10 or maybe even 11 cancelled, proposed or future modules of ISS. On the spacecraft front, we yet to see Boeing Starliner to carry crew to a space station, SpaceX Dragon XL can have its test fly to ISS as well, and you never know, maybe we will see the Starship dock to a space station by the year 2030. Also, there are at least two modules that I did not really cover. They are US backups for propulsion and control of Zvezda module. One is temporary one, another one is more permanent solution. And you can find this mini arrangement of ISS at my Kerbal X alongside with 1999 planned ISS and 2030 futuristic ISS. Here is the full list of mods used in this video. To run all craft files, you will need Hubtech 2, Shuttle Orbiter Construction Kit, Tantares, Near Future Solar, Tundra Exploration and stock-alike station parts. This was quite a fun video to make. I hope you have an amazing day, and Yakis out. Mm -hmm.